Hey guys and welcome back to Doc Off Call. I'm Dr. Maddy and welcome back to the channel. In our last video we had a look at the fight injuries in the Netflix anime show Bucky. Now if you haven't watched that video I will leave the link for it up here. And sticking with the theme of fight injuries, this week we're watching Kengen Ashura. But before we go any further, if I could get you to subscribe to the channel and give us a like on this video, it really helps with the channel. So, if you're ready for some broken bones, head injuries, some occasional eye gouging and some testicular shots, then you've come to the right place. Let's begin. <laughs> And to start off with, how can we not start off with a doctor? And this is exactly why I don't offer acupuncture to my patients. But in all serious, I do recognise acupuncture can be a really good treatment, especially for people with lower back pain. But the way in which the doctor's using it in this fight kind of reminds me of the Kill Bill scene where she does the five palm exploding heart technique. Ooh, okay, and as they've said there, open fractures to both of those fingers. Now, what they mean by open is that the bone is exposed to the open environment, as opposed to a closed fracture where the bones don't penetrate through the skin. <laughs> And I like how they've shown these x-rays here. It kind of reminds me of Mortal Kombat fatalities. <laughs> and it looks like the opponent here has hypermobile joints to the extreme. Now, there is a medical condition that is like this, but not this severe. And this looks like one surgeon who doesn't need an operating assistant. It looks like he carries his own instruments with him. But I like how he's creatively and cleverly made these swords out of his own bones to get around the rules of bringing a weapon into the arena. Very clever. <laughs> Now this type of surgery they're describing is what we call a corpus colostomy, where they separate the two hemispheres of the brain. The goal of the surgery is normally to help prevent the spread of electrical activity that goes from one hemisphere to the other in patients with epilepsy. So could it work? Possibly, but I've never seen it been done for this reason. And I think they actually borrowed this idea from the anime show Yo-Yo Hakushu, where the doctor in that anime has done something similar to himself. Performance. Pumping adrenaline makes me stronger, and cutting off my analytic chemicals makes me incapable of feeling pain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this doctor is crazy. He's installed explosives into his heels to give him a more powerful kick. <laughs> Oh gosh, okay, and it looks like it's reached its end with the doctor getting a broken neck and I presume a severed spinal cord. <laughs> and this doctor is brought back to life with what looks like a chiropractic neck adjustment. I mean, again, only in anime is this possible. Ah, interesting, but it looks like the final winner is the doctor, as he had laced his bone blades with a poison. What a clever move! And I guess this demonstrates that sometimes brains are more important than muscle. Ooh, okay, so thanks to this x-ray scope we can see that the first injury that's sustained is an incomplete fracture of the ulna and radius. Now what I mean by incomplete is that the fracture lines don't look like they cross the whole of the bone. Oh, 
とどめの一撃待ちわびた勝機すべてはこの一瞬のため Now, you only develop these types of fast reflexes with rigorous training. And it looks like he's developed it to the point where it's hardwired or become a spinal reflex. Now, an example of a spinal reflex is where, for example, you touch something hot and you quickly move your hand away. And it's very difficult to develop these. Shush! 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 コスモのやつは勝っちまうぜ。おお、ゴシ、and that is a literal torn muscle. Now, fortunately, as he can move his hand, we know that the tendons will still be working. Oh, jeez, he's actually bitten a chunk of flesh out of this guy's leg. What, did he skip breakfast? But joking aside, a human bite can be just as harmful as an animal or an insect bite, as humans carry specific bacteria on their teeth, which can lead to a wound infection. So, as a minimum, this guy's going to need a course of antibiotics, and he's probably going to need to go to surgery if one of the arteries have been severed. <laughs> Oh, God, okay, okay, this is too much.、Oh, a thumb in between the intercostal space. Now, the intercostal space is the space found between two different ribs, and between there you have a nerve and blood vessels. And if you ping that nerve, it's going to lead to electric shock like pain shooting through the body. <laughs> Oh god, and he wakes him up for more. Oh, the torture. Oh gosh, and further rib fractures here. And the worry would be whether any of these ribs are now penetrating inwards onto the organs, specifically the lungs. And it looks like he's likely to have some spinal trauma here with some crushed vertebral bodies with him banging against the walls and then the floor. <laughs> And he somehow turned it around by getting his opponent into a chokehold, rendering him unconscious. Now, the way this works is a combination of cutting off the air supply as well as the main blood supplies that go to the brain. I didn't think he was going to make it. <laughs> oh god, eye gouging. And I don't think there's anything worse. No wonder this is banned in all forms of martial arts. <laughs> oh my gosh! And then he's put his finger through the guy's ear canal. And the blood there would suggest that he's penetrated through into the guy's brain, causing brain damage. Oh, 
Oh gosh, okay, testicular rupture. Now this is too much. This is definitely worse than the eye gouging. But the reason why the testicles are so sensitive in the human body is because you have such a high density of nerve fibers in that area, meaning that you sense the slightest contact all the way through to massive trauma like this. Ooh, and there's a good example of a closed fracture where the bone hasn't penetrated through the skin. <laughs> oh god, is this too much? I mean, he's just given the guy an emergency tracheostomy. Okay, well, you know, that's definitely death by C-spine fracture leading to a transection of his spinal cord. And to finish off the brain, he's gone through the eye injury that he sustained earlier, penetrating through the orbital bone into the brain, causing brain damage and death. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I always like a bit of Japanese Engelwish, but it looks like this fight has got his work cut out for him with this final boss. <laughs> oh, when he goes straight for the head, and remember, a sufficient blow to the head can lead to a massive release of neurotransmitters that can cause an overdrive in the brain to the point where it gets overwhelmed. Now this can be experienced as either being stunned or a KO for the opponent. And it looks like this guy is only going for the head. <laughs> this guy does and doesn't look happy at the same time. But don't you think he reminds you a bit of Eren's Attack Titan from Attack on Titan? <laughs> And there we see he gets him on the counter-attack and you can see there that the opponent has become stunned. The brain has been overwhelmed and is having trouble sending signals to the body. The body then goes limp, leaving you vulnerable to a finishing move. And there we go. Alright, final fight. Jeez, okay, this guy looks jacked. I mean, there's veins everywhere. <laughs> Straight for the face and then the balls. Remember, overconfidence leaves you vulnerable when you underestimate your opponent, especially to cheap shots like this. <laughs> Jeez, okay, repeated face plant to the ground. I mean, this is definitely going to result in some facial injuries and possibly some fractures to the facial bones. <laughs> hmm, and this transformation again is very familiar. It kind of reminds me of Goku going Keio Ken in the Dragon Ball Z series. I mean, didn't he put a massive strain on his body to gain extra speed and strength? And he also turned red doing this. And there are also some aspects of the fight that remind me of the Goku versus Vegeta fight. And I believe that he's able to control this form by consciously controlling his heart rate 
to pump more blood out of his heart and supply it to his muscles. Now, theoretically, this is possible, but it does have its limitations. You see, for the heart to pump out more blood, it needs to also relax to allow the heart to fill first. Now, if the heart is preoccupied by being contracted, it gives very little time for the heart to fill. As a result, what you get is the heart pumping out smaller volumes more frequently, which is inefficient and can be harmful. Now, there are medical conditions where patients have abnormally fast heart rates and abnormal rhythms, and we call these arrhythmias, and we actually have to control these because they can be harmful. <laughs> Ah, and using your enemy's strength against them, and a very wise move, because it does actually work. And what we can see there is he takes an elbow to the sternum, and this may well cause bruising, if not a fracture of this entirely. <laughs> Oh, and it looks like he finally takes him out with a blow to the head and again using the momentum of his opponent to give that punch far more power. And that's where this season of the Kengen Ashura anime seems to come to an end. Now, I don't know if it is getting renewed for another season, but I really hope it does. So, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider giving us a like, and why not subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos like this. Now, I want you guys at home to have a say in the next anime series that I look at. Some of the shows that I'm thinking about looking at are Fist of the North Star or the Jojo series, and I'm even thinking of doing a video on the Another series. But let us know down in the comments what anime you would like to see next. Otherwise, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Repeat after me. Baki. Not Bakai. <laughs> I know. Thanks.